Hey, it's Joe Ferro with Geek Toolkit, and today I want to talk about a project I'm really excited about called Dynatap. Dynatap is a wireless NFC sender. NFC comes in a lot of varieties, but one of them is a little sticker like this. And what will happen here is I'll put this onto the scanner, and it takes that signal, sends it out over my Wi-Fi network to a server. That server actually sends it back to this computer, and that computer launch notepad. It executes the command line. In this video, I'm going to talk about everything you need to do to get this working. Here's a Metallica logo that I 3D printed. And on the back of it, I attached one of those NFC stickers. When I scan it, it sends it out to the server, sends it back, and it launches Winamp, and we start playing the Commodore 64 version of One by Metallica. What's nice about that is I could have those stickers on almost anything. And then that physical object becomes a way of interacting with the computer. And there's just something kind of just cool and slick about that. It's not something you have to do, but it's something that's definitely cool to do. Here's another throwback, but it shows just a different gaming scenario. I've got an old Atari stick, NFC sticker in the bottom. And when I wanna go play my old retro games now, I can just take the joystick that I wanna play, maybe a NES joystick or um, a Jaguar joystick, I scan it, and then I have those games load up. NFC stickers are cool, but what about characters like this? This actually has the NFC built into it. This is a Nintendo Amiibo. This is Ryu from Street Fighter. What about the scenarios beyond gaming? What if I want an entire environment to happen? I can place this down, launch Street Fighter, and also send a signal to my home automation system to turn my lights off. Now my lights are off in the room. So I can actually do things like have music turn on, lights turn off, you can imagine the news. The other cool thing is that was an Amiibo. This is actually a Disney Infinity figure. And that turns my lights back on. So it just shows that Skylanders, Infinity Figures, any of these that you might have laying around can be used for this to control home automation scenarios, music, launching applications, and other things. One other scenario I'm still working on setting up is using a tag like this that's attached to my keys. When I come in, I can set my keys down, have the radio start playing the news. I can have my Amazon speaker play some music, tell me the news, tell me what's on my calendar for the day, and also change the lighting and temperature to what is comfortable for me. For the rest of this video, I wanna talk about how to put this thing together. I wanna to talk about how to program it, a little bit about the technologies used. Like I use a library called Homey for the uh, D1 Mini that's in here. Very, very powerful. And then we'll talk a bit about troubleshooting, things to look out for. And then finally, we'll talk a, a bit about other scenarios that I'm thinking about doing in the future. Okay, here's the cost breakdown for the parts that you're gonna need for this. I'm using Amazon prices at the top here, but you see at the bottom, AliExpress has it much, much cheaper. It's a very inexpensive project, especially if you buy it in kind of bulk, if you buy five packs of things. The Wemos D1 Mini is on the bottom right here, and that is the an Arduino that is incredibly powerful. It's powered by an ESP8266 chip. It has Wi-Fi capabilities and tons of examples out there to do quite a few things. If you're gonna be doing a bunch of Arduino stuff or building a couple of these, I recommend just getting a five pack of them at least. The next thing I wanna talk about is the RC522 reader. I stumbled across of this a while ago on an old project and bought it. And honestly, if you're gonna do an NFC project nowadays, I would research the better and newer readers. I wouldn't start with this. However, for this project, it works really, really well and it's very, very inexpensive. You can see the AliExpress prices, everything is much, much cheaper. Um, I'm doing this during COVID, I'm making this video, and I've heard that AliExpress can be a bit hit or miss on ordering, so I just wanted to give you the options and so you can understand what you're looking at. Finally, the other thing that you're gonna need is something that can run Mosquito, and this is for the MQTT server. Now, there are public MQTT servers you can use to get up and running on this for free, but I highly recommend eventually getting one running on your home network. In this video, I'll talk about how to do it in Home Assistant, but any Raspberry Pi can do it. And also if you have a PC up and running or a Mac, I believe you can do it on both of those as well. It's very simple to have an MQTT broker. Mosquito is the one I'm using, it's been very simple. So this slide, I wanna take a second just because the rest of this video is gonna go very, very fast. And so this is the slide where I kind of lay out everything and let you know how it all works. An NFC sticker gets placed to this NFC reader and the reader will energize the sticker and read data off of it. And it's gonna get what's called a UID. The UID is a unique identifier for that tag and that will get passed over to the D1 Mini, which will do some logic 
and decide if it's going to send it out over MQTT. MQTT is a protocol that we're using to talk to our server. And we publish both a topic, which is kind of like the title, and the message data. The server is the thing that's running on the Raspberry Pi, or you can use a public one. It's known as a broker in MQTT parlance, and it basically handles all of the message coming in and out. Multiple things can publish to a server and multiple things can subscribe on the other side. So on the other side of this, the demos I showed earlier, I had a Home Assistant subscriber and I also had a Python subscriber running on a PC. In this video, we'll talk about the Python subscriber. So the way the video is gonna work is I'm gonna talk about how to assemble the hardware together. I'll talk about how to uh, flash the software to the hardware. We'll talk about how to set up the broker then we'll talk about how to configure the hardware to look at the broker. And then we'll talk about the Python part on the end. Okay, so let's tear one apart and I'll show you how this is put together. First thing we're gonna do is flip it over. I did a Veroni print on the bottom here. This is the 3D printed enclosure I did. You can see here, you've got a Wemos D1 Mini. This has the Wi-Fi chip in it. This is actually the antenna. There's pinouts on the both sides, and I'll talk about that later. And then that's wired into the pins of an NFC reader. I'm going to pull that out, flip it over. Here's the antenna. It's an RFID RC522. You can see here all of your pinouts that we're going to solder to, and I'll get you that pin diagram. Let me show you what this looks like before it's all soldered together, and I'll show you why this is important to do it this way. So we know it needs to fit in the box like this. When you get these, here's a quick unboxing. <laughs> so I don't do unboxing videos. When you get this right here, this is what it looks like. And you're gonna have no pin header, but it comes with two separate types. It comes with a bent one, like that there. And it comes with straight pins, which we won't use. It also comes with an RFID tag this right here, you can put it in your wallet and use that as one of your cards. And it comes with a key fob, typically. This one here, this is the interesting one. So what we're going to do is flip this over because we want the antenna to go up. Remember, when this goes in here, it flips over. And then we're going to put this on backwards like this. So that it faces back. Then this allows us to put the D1 Mini here. Now... The way we align this, we want the power to go out of this hole right here. So when we stack all that together, you'll get what we have right here. That's how that works. You can see the pins coming over and back. They go behind where the antenna is. And then they go towards the D1 Mini. The power goes here. And that lines up with what we have there. Okay. So the only thing you need to know now is where these pins go from here to here, I'll get you that image and graph. And that's basically your soldering. You're gonna cut these wires, you're gonna solder them on here, solder them here, put that whole thing into your enclosure. I'll link to this enclosure I'm using here. And I'll probably upload this one because this actually is a modified one. I, I added a little bit of height here, but really you don't need it. Now one thing to note, the way this is set up on the end here it's very tight the way this works is you plug in here i want to show this just because it confused me for a second you see that little bit of gap there you're going to kind of press that into the side and press down and that locks these two together one thing i'll recommend is that you program the chip first with like a blink or some kind of very simple uh, program just to make sure your chip works and is programmable. I hadn't done that yet and ended up in a bad state where I had soldered in an entire chip that was bad. Um, and so I had to desolder it and redo it again. Okay, and that wraps up assembly. So now we can talk about loading libraries. We can talk about Homey and how to get that set up. Okay, we're gonna start out with Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna assume that you have that downloaded. You're gonna to wanna to open up the Dynatap folder. If you don't have Platform IO installed, you'll get a prompt in the lower right here to install it. Select that prompt and follow the UI. Basically to get this installed here, this IDE will allow us to program the Arduino, do debugging, flash the memory and stuff like that. You see here, I'm just going through the platform IO install. 
and I'll skip over this with some editing. Okay, now that we have it installed, we're gonna reload the Visual Studio IDE. And when this comes back up, you'll have a new icon on the left-hand side there. It looks like it either an ant head or an alien head. We're gonna reopen the Dynatap folder and we're gonna select the platform.ini. And what this does now is opens it up in platform.io. On the left-hand side, we've got that new icon on the bottom and then we've got a file icon on the top. These are the two places that I typically work in when I'm working in this IDE. It's here and up here. Up here, if you go to the SRC and main CPP, this is the main source code. You can click and build here or you can click down here and go to build. Now we're gonna build and get an error. One of the things we're missing is the NFC header. So we're gonna go load that first. And then we're also gonna get another header for Homie. Select the alien head over here, go to libraries. And then here you can actually search for libraries and install them. We're gonna search for this string here. And you see we get a couple of results. The way to know which one's the correct one is look at the chips that it's made for. See there, it says Expressif 8266. That's what we want. These other ones don't say that, so we know we don't need any of those. You can click on it to select it, and then you can click to install and also check all the versions that are available. It selects the latest one by default. The next thing we're gonna search for is Homey. Homey has a bunch of other dependencies, but this will take care of all of them by just simply installing the Homey add-on. Make sure that you look for the Expressif 8266 again. Click install. We're gonna do 3.0, which is the latest. And there we go, that's very simple. Now we can go back to our code and we can click build. We should at this point be able to build successfully. From here, you can go to this quick menu and simply select upload, or you can do upload and monitor if you wanna watch the serial output. Okay, as I said, if you have Home Assistant, I'll show you how to set up the Mosquito MQTT broker very simply in here. If you click down on supervisor, add-on store, search for Mosquito, you'll see it right there. Go ahead and click install. Mine's already installed. Make sure that you install it and start it. For configuration options, I chose to go with false for anonymous. This means that I have to authenticate to my server and then logins, it will pick up my Home Assistant ones by default. This is important to know. The other thing that's gonna be important is the IP address here. This is gonna be your broker IP. And this port here is gonna be the port. You're gonna need the login, the port, and the IP address for anything that you do with your broker to connect to it. Okay, now that we've got the broker set up and started, let's switch over to getting Homey set up via the web configuration tool. Okay, now that you've uploaded the code, the next thing we wanna do is connect to the device and configure it. On the Homey website, there's this link here that I'll link put in the description, but this link looks like this. And it's important to load this link while you're connected to the internet. What happens then is once you're connected to the internet and you have got this page loaded, you're gonna switch Wi-Fi networks while this is going. Make sure it says waiting for device and then look for the homey device here and connect to it. What'll happen now is your computer will connect to the homey device over Wi-Fi and that will load up a page that looks like this here. Once you see this, go ahead and get rid of it. If all goes well, you'll see it say it's gathering information and you'll end up at this page. If it doesn't work, disconnect from it, reconnect to this page, refresh it, and go ahead and start over. Once you're at this page, you're in a good spot because now we can go through the wizard and configure the device. The first thing we wanna do is select our Wi-Fi network and then give it a password. What that'll do is actually connect the device on next boot to your Wi-Fi network. What we want to do next is point to the broker that we have installed. I have Mosquito installed at 192.168.1.3 and on the default port. For the Homey base topic, I'm going to go with the default of Homey. And I'm going to tell it to use MQTT auth. And 
and then go to the next page. This page here, I want to give the device name. I'm going to call it Dynatap. And for device ID, I'm just going to simply call it 001. We can decide if we want to have over the air updating enabled here. I'm not going to do it for this device. So now the device will reboot and it says we can close that page. And what will happen is the light on the device will flash. And when it stops flashing, then you know it's actually connected to the internet and the broker. The light starts out with a slow flash, then goes faster, and then it will turn off. Okay, now we're in the troubleshooting section. There's two things I wanna talk about. One is what happens if your configuration goes bad? Broker changes IP addresses or your password for your Wi-Fi changes. If any of those happen, then your little Dynatap device ends up in a really bad state because it will endlessly try to connect to the Wi-Fi that it thinks it knows about. And it will endlessly try to connect to the broker. And if you upload new code, if you edit the code and upload it, it will not um, overwrite those settings. Those settings actually get protected away somewhere. The section they get protected away in is called spiffs. And in the code, I gave you a nice little utility where you can uncomment this, upload this code, boot the device, and it will clear spiffs out and put it back into like the pairing state where you can go ahead and configure everything for your Wi-Fi and your broker name. So if you end up in a bad state, that's how to fix it. Uncomment these, upload it, boot the device, then recomment these, re-upload it so that it doesn't wipe the configuration every time it boots after that. It will clear it out and you'll be able to set it up. All right, the other thing is at this point, we should be able to actually look at the broker. So I'm using a tool called MQTT Explorer. It's very, very simple. It's got a connection dialog here. You fill in your IP address in your port, do your account info and hit connect and it will automatically enumerate everything that's connected. You don't have to know your topics or anything. It will self-discover all of your topics. So what's cool about this is we did Homey 001 for the device, and you can see here it actually, uh, this is one of the things about Homey I haven't talked about. Not only does Homey give you that really cool UI to configure your Wi-Fi and all that, but it also has a self-discovering API which could be very powerful in the future or for advanced coders because you can use this and actually get information like what are the types and what are available. So here you see there's a name called NFC node and it's available as a sensor. Um, there's stuff like firmware versions in here. There's statistics for how long it's been up and so on, the signal for Wi-Fi and all sorts of stuff. So Homey does a whole infrastructure of things to make MQTT really easy and powerful and that's why I started using it. And I've been really happy with it so far. Now, the question at hand is, what does our data look like? I'm gonna scan a tag. And you can see right here, the UID shows up. Now, if I click on this, you get the full topic right here. And this is really important because this topic, remember when you subscribe and you try to get this data, you need the full topic name. So homie slash 001 slash 001 slash UID is my topic. And if I subscribe to that topic, then I will get UIDs as things touch this device. Now, if I had a second device, I would call it 002, and that's how I differentiate between them. And so I just scanned a different tag. I've taken it off for one, two, three seconds. I'm gonna scan it again. And what's cool is you see it flash up here to show that a new tag has come in, and that's really handy. So that's how to debug tags, MQTT, and how to wipe out your settings if they go bad. Next thing we're gonna do is jump over to Python and actually start using this and having fun with it. Okay, cool. Now we can actually play with Python code and talk about how to use this. Now you can use this from any language, uh, just about I've seen libraries for everything from PowerShell, C Sharp, Java. Um, Python was just a simple one that I figured I can show and I know enough of it to uh, get my hands dirty. Paho.mqtt is the library that you're gonna wanna pull in. You can pip install it. It's very simple. Um, I'm importing subprocess because I'm doing command lines. So all you're gonna do is these four lines right here, you're gonna hook up two message handlers, one for when the message come in, comes in, one for connection. 
Make sure that you change your username and password to the real ones for your broker and change the IP address to your broker. This will execute and connect to the broker. It goes into a forever loop so that up here we can just handle the messages on connect and on message. On connection to the client, this is where you subscribe uh, for anything that you want to subscribe to. And my subscription topic, which is what this is, remember this came from right here. This was MQTT Explorer that I just showed. I went to UID and there it is on the side. So I just push that right here and subscribe to that. Now in the on message, you're gonna get the payload coming in. Remember put the B in front of it and then you can do if checks against it. And these are basically the tag uh, UIDs coming in. And I do a print debug and then I do a sub process and whatever I wanna launch. So this is the simple, I wanna launch a command line. Uh, let's see, I'll get this running. And you'll see down here that if you see connected with result code zero, all of your connections to your broker worked. Then when I scan centipede, it says, oh, you see notepad launched, found centipede. So it saw this tag here. Now it will launch the code by default on this. will actually show you what um, got scanned and what topic. And so that is super handy there. I'll get this sample code up there for uh, for you. It's got a couple of neat things, like if you want to launch MAME with a um, game info to, to skip past a lot of the screens. It's got an iExplorer, it uses a shell equals true. These are Windows only, I believe, but it will shell execute some stuff. Um, and then a way of launching a Steam app. This is how I did the Atari controller one. And then the Winamp one, this is uh, basically how I did that one. The other thing I want to mention here is this site, this site, internetoflego.com. And the guy's name is, let's see, Corey. Here it is, Corey going. Corey, when I was searching for how to do a Wemos and an and RC522, see if anyone had done it, I found his site. And he did it all in Legos. He has this amazing IoT Lego city. This site is just worth looking through anyway. Um, he's got his pinouts and everything. Now, some of the things I've edited, for instance, I use the Wemos do mini pins when I showed it to you because I thought it was a little bit easier. You don't have to map these. But he's got some amazing stuff here. His homie code is version 2. You'll see that I updated his code and riffed off of it. Um, but his code, he had the original source written for this. And he's got a great guide here. Uh, goes through the firmware. Some of this is outdated, but most of it's still legit. And uh, he actually goes into the node red flows using pure no node red, not off a of home assistant to do um, basically controlling other devices and stuff. He, he has a whole video showing his like IOT city light up with this. So I want to thank him for that. The other thing I want to mention is I did a test with my daughter to see if she could turn my lights on and off and figure out how to use this. And my daughter is 20 months old and she had figured this out. It took her about three tries and she can now turn lights on and off. So that's kind of a cool thing as far as it allows a kid to do something that normally I uh, would be kind of hard to figure out how I'd let her do that since she can't reach light switches. Um, I have to figure out an enclosure that I can put the reader in that she wouldn't destroy, but as far as the tags, she could just put her toys on it and have it turn the lights on and off. I think that would be really handy for her. Um, and finally, uh, the next video, I'll probably jump into home automation and show this with Home Assistant from the MQTT point of view. The reason I think this is so powerful is there's so many things that plug in MQTT and we have a new client now. We basically have a NFC tag reader client and we can use that for so many different things. So I'm looking forward to making more videos with this. If you want to see them, just hit subscribe and... Uh, I'll get them out to you as soon as I can here. I want to thank you for watching this. I want to thank you again for all the kind comments, the support. Um, I'm glad to get back to project videos. This is one of the things I was really passionate about doing on this channel and creating things I hadn't really seen before, even though I, I did find this one um, in the depths of the internet. Um, and hopefully you learned a lot from this video. I tried to go through the tech and go through things a little bit slower on this video. So... 
hopefully that was useful for you. Let me know in the comments what you thought and looking forward to your ideas and builds. Let me know, share them. I'd love to see them. And until I see you next time, have a great day.